Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I am so excited to be interviewing a close colleague and a friend of mine, Lorinda Roper. Lorinda started her journey as a virtual expert two and a half years ago after her husband passed away. And you guys, imagine having that happen in your life and you go, what am I going to do now? So we're going to get to hear from Lorinda about that. Today, she helps her clients bring peace out of chaos by managing their daily operations, content, emails, and calendars. And before she began her virtual expert career, Lorinda had worked in the corporate world for many years and worked in various positions from accounting to purchasing. And in her spare time, she enjoys spending time with her granddaughter and helping family. And I will tell you that she is also an incredible, and I might get the word wrong here, crocheter. Is that right, Lorinda? Yes. <laughs> I mean, you guys literally will not believe the things that she can crochet. Um, a Dogs, uh, a unicorn, um, and they, they're just incredible. So Lorinda, Thank welcome. Thank you. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Lorinda. So Lorinda, oh my gosh, you look so beautiful today. If you guys aren't looking, aren't looking at this on YouTube, I highly recommend you go there. She just is all smiles and has just has her makeup done beautifully and everything. And I love that. Thank you. Um, I, of course, still look the same messy hair, no makeup, but, <laughs> but uh, that's on me, not on you, Lorinda. So Lorinda, um, it's so, you know, I just want to say again, how sad I am that you had that happen to you that your husband passed. So can you talk a little bit and you can go back as far as you want about, you know, what happened, what had you uh, decide to start your virtual assistant and virtual expert business and tell us a little bit about that journey. I had wanted to work from home for a long time and I had been doing typing for a guy that he was trying to get his business up and going. So it was like, you know, in the evenings after my job, And I had applied at an agency that hired virtual assistants. And when they got my application, they told me I wasn't qualified. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it because I know how qualified you are. <laughs> and I thought, all right, that can't be right. Something's not right with this. And my husband passed away six months after we bought our property of 20 acres because it had been his dream to always own land. And after he passed, my brother tells me, you're going to have to sell the property. You can't do the maintenance on it. You can't afford it all on your own. And he said, I want you to move in with us, take six months off, quit your job. Don't do anything, but think about what you want to do. Because I've always been the caretaker since I was really young. I helped raise my siblings. I took care of my mom in her later years. I took care of my dad when he was sick. And so he's like, just take some time for yourself. And I moved in with him after my property sold. And I still had, it took me four months to let go of the security of the J-O-B because that's the only thing I still had that was mine. Everything else was gone. And so I finally decided, okay, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and it was really scary. But I thought, what made you, what made you decide to do it? What finally, what finally clicked and you like, yeah, I am going to let go of this. Um, 
I was tired of the corporate rat race, the corporate politics, as well as I knew God had a plan for me. And I, I knew I was supposed to be out of where I was. So I prayed about it and talked to my brother about it. He's like, go for it. You know, what can you lose with it? And so that's really what prompted me to do it because I wanted the freedom of having my own business that I could help family more so than what I had been able to do thus far. And so I was out of a job for a month before I saw your program on Facebook. And I jumped at it because it's like, this is what I've always wanted to do. Someone's told me I can't do it, but I know I can. I have the skills. And so I jumped into your program. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. And I was so excited that you did that. So, Lorinda, when you um, when you were told by that agency that you weren't qualified to do the work, and then you saw the information about my my training program, and you said, you know what? I, I know I can do this. How, how did you have that courage? How did you have that confidence? How can you, what tips can you tell others when somebody says, no, you're not going to be able to do this. How do you, how do you rise above that? How do you get that courage to go forward? If you tell me I can't do it, I'm going to prove to you I can. <laughs> when I was in college, my degree was music. And it was a five-year degree. And I told them I wanted to have a minor. And they told me I couldn't because I wouldn't have time. And I was like, watch me. And in the five years, <laughs> I ended up with a double major and a minor. <laughs> wow. So it's like, don't tell me I can't do it because I'm going to prove to you I can <laughs> <laughs> yeah I love that that's a great tip so believe in yourself enough to go just because you think I can't doesn't mean I can't you're not exactly you're 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 not God right exactly and you listen to God and yes. God says yes Lorinda you got this exactly he's always yeah. been there with me and I know that I can follow his lead he has not led me astray. Mm. And about a year ago, you know, I, I was beginning to wonder, am I really on the right path? And I was told that Jesus's ministry was three years and where he didn't have a home. He went from home to home, place to place, helping people. And I was told that was my path and I was halfway there. Oh, so wow. my three years is almost up. That is so powerful, Lorenda. Yeah. And so I know I can handle anything that comes my way with his help. Yeah. And, and you, you have just been so strong. So through these past several years, um, what lessons You've already shared one. Listen, listen, pray, listen to God, listen to um, your higher power. Um, what other lessons have you learned in, in you, you've made a couple of big dare to leaps, right? You sold your oh, property. Yeah. <laughs> you had to make it without your husband. Suddenly you moved in with your brother, you changed yeah. careers. So um, what lessons have you learned throughout that, that could help others? Because, you know, there are a lot of people in the world going through the same kind of challenges. Don't doubt yourself. You have an inner strength that you don't even, you're not even aware that you have. 
And that whale is going to rise up when you need it the most. And it's going to get you through the hard times. Even when you doubt yourself, know you can make it through. Don't give up on yourself. Because you're not alone. And especially in Kathy's group, we have such a great um, connection and support system. And we help each other. As long as you allow yourself to be open with the other group, then they're there to answer your questions. They're there to help you through your doubts. And it's helped a lot. Yeah. And that community is so important. Whatever community it is that you belong to, make sure it's one that has the same values as as you have. And Lorinda, uh, you support others in the community. And that's, I think, really important that you give back to that Mm -hmm. community. And you do that all the time. You are a real giver, Lorinda. I mean, you give to your family, you give to our community. I know you give to everybody in your life. Yeah, sometimes too much. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I agree, sometimes too much. So how do you, how have you figured out to um, pull back on the too much? Again, it's in prayer, you know, when am I wearing myself too thin and not taking care of myself? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's listening to your body, listening to that still small voice that you hear and that mm-hmm. we try to shut out sometimes. Um, and It's hard sometimes to say no, but you have to reach that point that, all right, this is my boundary and I'm not stepping over this. And one of my boundaries in this business is I don't work after five o'clock in the evenings and I don't work on the weekends. And I love that flexibility. I love being able to say, these are my hours and this is Mm -hmm. Mm non-negotiable. Yeah. And that is really powerful and very important to set those boundaries and stick to them because people try to get through those boundaries every day, don't they? Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All the time. Yeah. So let's talk about your business. So what's the name of your business and where can people find you online? It's uh, Roper Initiatives, LLC, but my website is expertvirtualservices.com. Expertvirtualservices.com. I love it. So tell us a little bit about what you do, what you specialize in, and give us some examples of what you do for clients. Um, Operations isn't about tasks and management, but it's about leadership. And so I will step in with the client and I'm involved in their planning, their organization, and their supervising of their processes. I will help them write their processes out and keep them up to date because you write what you do and you do what you write. That way, when you have new team members come on board, they know exactly what to do. And what you expect from them. And then I can help you make improvements for higher profitability in your business. I can help by being more strategic and productive by handling those tasks that you really don't have time to do and they get in the way of building your business. I can take those over. So what you need to do is make a list of everything you do, all the tasks and everything you should be doing, but may not necessarily (laughs) be doing. (laughs) And circle the ones that are most impactful to your business. 
then give everything else to me and see how it changes your world. And you don't, shouldn't be thinking of it as an additional expense when you work with me, but as a way to leverage your time and capacity. So you can spend your time growing your profits and your productivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I can keep you organized and on task and do it with humor and uh, compassion. Humor and compassion. I love those two combined. (laughs) And I bring... you bring your team, you have a team. So talk about that a little bit. Talk about your team and, and how you work with a client. Um, do you work directly with the client and your team works behind the scenes or how does that work? Yes. At this point, I work directly with the client and I will hand off the tasks to the team as, you know, that they are, they have the skills for it. And I make sure that we work well together. I, I enjoy working with the team because I can encourage them and I can help them grow in their business and in personal life as I'm doing it to myself as well. Yeah. So talk a little bit about the advantages to a business owner who works with you because you do have a team talk about the advantages of working with you because you have a team rather than if you did not have a team working with the team allows me a greater capacity for the work and i can my team and i can do the work but we can get it done more efficiently than if it's just one person and quicker And we can take on more of a load than just me being by myself. So I can help more clients bring the peace out of chaos (laughs) than if it's just me by myself. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, Lorinda, for me, you know, I work um, exclusively with virtual experts. That's who's on my team. Um, that sure it's not surprising to anybody to hear that. And I totally agree with you. I actually prefer to work with people who have a team of their own because then I don't have to hire any extra people. That's, that's what you've already done. I don't have to worry about what if you're, you get sick or you're on vacation, you've already got that built in support. Um, so all of those things that if you work with a one-on-one with a virtual assistant, those are gone. And I don't, I haven't had to pay anything extra for it. Right. And working with the team also allows me the downtime I need as well so that I can be rested to be able to work with my clients and not so overwhelmed. I love that. Yeah, because um, I know that I made the mistake of building a team too big with people working directly with me because I didn't have people with teams. And so, for example, if I wanted somebody to do my email, I had to have one person. If I wanted somebody to do my SOPs, I had another person. If I Mm -hmm. wanted somebody to do um, my calendar, that might be another person. Um, And so I had all those people that I had to work with directly. Versus with you, you and your team handle all of those things and And only need to work directly with you. Exactly. And instead of you're having to keep track of everyone that does your, your work, I can do that for you instead. Mm -hmm. And I can keep everyone on task. Yeah. Wow. That sounds awesome. Can you give me an example of the type of clients that you work with and that you that you prefer to work with? So if somebody's listening to this and going, wow, I that that's the kind of person I want to work with. I'd like to explore this a little bit more, but I'm not sure. I don't know who she wants to work with. But tell us who you're looking to work with. 
One of my clients is a university and I love the, the work with them because it, it's a wide range of stuff that I'm doing. And actually I'm doing calendar, email, content, and organizational, you know, uh, operational management with them. Um, and then I also like to work with people who kind of have an idea of what direction they want to go because I can get a clearer idea of what their vision is. Now, if it's someone that is not quite clear on what they want to do, then it takes a little more time to sift through everything. I also work with coaches and speakers because I like to be able to keep them organized with their calendars, make sure that they're on task when they have podcasts coming up or when they have an event coming up, then I can keep them on task and I enjoy doing that. I enjoy working with um, people who want to grow their business, who want to help others because mm. I'd like to help. And if it's working with someone who is helping someone else, then that extends my, my circle as well. Yeah. So congratulations on working with a university that that's gotta be a big job and an exciting job for you. So congratulations on that. Thanks. And I want to talk a little bit more about coaches and speakers. So will you work with do you like to work with any kind of coaches or is it specifically business coaches, health coaches, life coaches? Um, I'm still exploring that. Uh, I've only been in with the business coaches at this point, but I'd like to explore the other avenues. You know, so with, you're open to any type of coach. Yes. Right now, your expertise and experience is with business coaches, yes. but you're open to life and health coaches also. Mm -hmm. Cool. And, and, you know, here's the reality. Uh, a life and health coach, well, they do business also, right? So exactly. I can still <laughs> so there's there's a lot of similarities there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So so I totally understand. Um, and speakers, we're talking about professional speakers. Are we talking about podcasters? Um, what what do you consider a speaker? Uh, someone who is doing um, speaking engagements. And right okay. now it's virtual for the most part. Right. Uh, and podcasting. Because okay. the same tools, the same skills apply to both. Right. Yeah, I hear you on that. Speaking is speaking, whether it's yeah. virtual, in-person, podcast, as far as the virtual expert support you provide pertains to that. Because exactly. still keeping them organized, um, marketing, you know, making sure they've got time to do their marketing and, and get those mm -hmm. gigs that they want. So, yeah, I hear you on that. I, I, I agree. I hadn't really thought about it that way till you said it. So thanks for sharing that. Okay. Um, so, Lorinda. I want to have you talk just a little bit about um, all the other skills that you have. You're an incredibly creative person. You're 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 like a brainiac. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're like a nerd, a brainiac with this incredibly creative side, which is so unusual. You know, so most people are either one extreme or the other more, and you really cross that line. So, would you talk a little bit about um, what you do creatively? Um, in the past, I baked like sweet breads, like banana bread, stuff like that. And I would sell over a hundred loaves between Halloween and New Year's and I sold them. Wow. Uh, but then I, when I lost one of my jobs, 
I lost my client base. <laughs> and I just haven't built that back up yet. Um, I do cake decorating. I've done wow. weddings. I've done catering. But right now I'm working on crocheting. I do a lot of baby blankets in the shape of a star. Uh, right now, my latest projects are the unicorns, elephants, and pigs. And I'm getting ready to make a sheep. And I am in the process of creating a Shopify page. So I can also <gasps> cool. add that to my awesome. repertoire. <laughs> Yeah, and and describe because um, and if you've got one there handy, welcome to show it because it's kind of hard to describe what these they are. are. They, oh, they, look at that! It's so cute. They are so describe it. An animal that an older child can carry around, and you can also untie it and lay it out on the floor for tummy time for infants, and you can add shapes to it and um, like different materials as it's laid out to allow them that tactile uh, touching and stuff. And people have loved these, but it's not just children. Adults have loved them. Too. <laughs> yeah, and go ahead and tell my secret. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, how I got into this one is I saw a pattern on Facebook and at that time I was saving you know I, I would repost or share something if I wanted to save it for future uh -huh. I had no inclination to make these and my brother <laughs> contacts me my youngest one and he's like you owe me a pig I want a pig <laughs> oh now I have to figure out where the patterns come from <laughs> So I found the pattern and then I discovered, well, there's patterns for sheep, pig, cow, elephant, horse, and unicorn. And then I was asked, well, do you make a dog or a cat? And she's now in the process of making those patterns as well. So I'll have those to awesome. sell as well. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I've created. <laughs> but... So they make fabulous gifts for for moms and yes. parents and for adults because I was like, I want one. I, yeah. I learned to, I want one right away. <laughs> I want one, not for my grandchild. Um, I don't even have a grandchild that young anymore. But for me, I wanted to cuddle with it. And then, of course, um, I got to thinking about it and I wanted to give a gift. So I'm like, Lorenda, could you send this as a gift? And Lorinda's yeah. like, of course. And Lorinda, I just want to tell you, thank you for doing that. Because that was so easy for me to send that as a gift with you doing all the work on patch, packaging it and mailing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I can't wait um, for the person to receive it and just go crazy over it. So. And she should have that today. <laughs> oh, exciting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What a surprise that's going to be to, to show up at somebody's house and say, oh, what is this? Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so if anybody wants to um, get in, get in touch with you about having you crochet something for them, um, whether it's, you know, a star baby blanket or whatever animal creature they enjoy most, how do they do that? They can contact me at my email, which is Lorenda Roper, L-A-R-I-N-D-A-R-O-P-E-R at gmail.com. Yeah. And, and any of you guys who are just listening Shopify to this on audio? Pardon? Yeah. And if you email her and she has a Shopify page, she'll let you know. Exactly. As soon as that comes up. And uh, by the way, Lorinda, if you do get that Shopify page up before this uh, podcast go li goes live, we'll put that link. Just let us know. We'll put that link in the podcast notes too. Okay. So anybody listening to this, just look at the look at the notes. There might be a Shopify link in there, depending on how quickly we get this out. Um, and if you didn't watch this on YouTube, go to go to my YouTube channel. It's at virtual expert training on YouTube and watch this episode, this podcast episode with Lorinda. So you can see 
um, what it is that she's creating because it's really, really hard to describe. It's uh, very three. It's, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. It's beautiful. Um, so, you know, I always have to tell um, goofy stories and my husband was reading a letter that we got from um, a relative of ours and she wrote, I've been doing a lot of knitting and crotcheting. <laughs> Is that what you read? It? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought of you, Lorinda. I'm like, oh, I have to tell Lorinda that my husband thinks it says crotch it. <laughs> oh. So telling uh, my husband will never listen to these podcasts, so he will never hear this. Yeah. But any of his friends that listen, yes, you know, that's how he talks. He, he, <laughs> he says, I don't really know what crotcheting is, but it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Lorinda, next time somebody asks, do you crotch it? You'll know it's my husband asking. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So you have and another, you have another talent that I literally just learned about in the past month or so. <laughs> and you're being pressured to put that talent to good use. I, I pressured you and you did it for me, but you want to talk a little bit about that too, just so people can hear about how well-rounded you are and all the amazing things that you're capable of. Um, like I mentioned earlier, my degree is in music and my major was voice. Um, I have sung in church since I was probably junior high, middle school age, about 12. And I did contests all through high school. Uh, I sang in the um, Miss Kansas pageant for the Miss USA. I sang Ooh. in the uh, Miss Teen Kansas for the Miss Teen USA when I was younger. Um, I, sang, I sang for my, my husband's funeral, my mom's, my oh dad's my and my grandmother's funerals. Oh my and gosh, I don't know how you made it through those. It's, you put on a different persona. You're a different person. Mm. So that you can separate mm. from what's going on. Yeah. And then when I got off stage, then I can let it go. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I enjoy singing its release. And I sang one time and it was for a gospel fest in Kansas oh. where my uh, parents went to church and I had attended it for five years. I sang there five years straight. Wow. And Martina McBride's grandmother, she grew up 10 miles from where my parents lived. And she went up to my mom and told her, Lorinda's voice is so much better than Martina's. She really needs to go further. Wow. And made me kind of feel good. <laughs> yeah, it should have. But life happens. Mm -hmm. And I was one that, why should I spend eight hours working on a piece of music when I can have it down in an hour? So I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> no, you're not. That is one thing you are not, Lorinda. <laughs> but um, you're I efficient. Enjoy... That's called efficient. Yes. I am definitely efficient. <laughs> yes, you are. But uh, um, so I I love to sing, and my husband was. He told someone one time. He said. If I want to hear her sing, all I have to do is turn the music on. And she just starts singing with it. Oh, that's so, awesome. He just liked to listen to me sing. How wonderful. And what did I talk you into doing? Talent show. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We just had a virtual event. We called the VV and we had a talent contest. 
And I talked Lorinda into singing and it was wonderful. And she won, of course, she won the talent <laughs> contest. And now what are you trying to, somebody's trying to talk you into doing? To audition for The Voice. Whoa. I'm just trying to figure out if I'm not too old for it. <laughs> oh, of course not. They, nobody's ever too old. We're, we're young. We're youngsters, Lorinda. Oh, yeah. But, and the older I well, get, I mean, the, the younger it feels. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, I'm exactly there. Yes, I just said that yesterday. I'm like, when I was 40, I thought, oh my God, I'm so old. And now I'm 63 yeah. and I think, oh my gosh, I'm so young. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, I, I, for one, I am voting for you to, to apply to, or whatever you have to do uh, to sure. the voice, because I would love to see you on there. That would be Thank so you. amazing. And what an experience that would be for you, no matter what, right? Yes. It would be a real experience. Think about the network and who all you could meet. I know. I thought about that. Ooh, too. That alone. <laughs> yeah. That alone would be exciting. That alone would be exciting. Yeah. Well, let's go back to your business because I want to wrap this up by making sure that everybody who's been listening to this and is like, wow, Lorinda is the kind of person that I really want to partner with in my business. Have her help me get organized, manage my emails, uh, get my SOPs, my processes in place. Um, and by the way, if you're a business owner listening to this, um, please know that the number two reason um, that a business sells for a higher dollar price is because they have standard operating procedures in place. That's the number two reason. It's very important to have that. So if you think, yeah, someday, because that's what I was doing, someday I'll get those in place. Well, that someday needs to be now, because if you have somebody like Lorenda who does them on a regular basis, then you have it done and you don't have to try to do everything at once, which is really a bad way to do stuff. So if you're listening to this and you think, um, hey, I'd like to find out if I'm a good match for Lorenda. Lorenda, what's your process on that? Do people contact you via your website and schedule a time to talk with you? What, what do you recommend? They can book a a virtual coffee on my website, which is expertvirtualservices.com. Or you can just mm -hmm. email me and I can send you the booking link as well at lorendaroper dot or at gmail.com. So Lorenda Roper at gmail.com and say the URL one more time. Expertvirtualservices.com. That's great. It doesn't cost you anything to have a chat with her. No, nope. you're going to learn a lot about what it's like to work with a professional like Lorenda. Um, you might even get her to sing for you. <laughs> <laughs> Lorenda's like, please don't say that, Kathy. I told you I might say something embarrassing. <laughs> I'll sing at the drop of a hat. <laughs> Um, and I just want to give you my personal endorsement, Lorenda. Um, I've had the privilege of getting to work with you for the last two and a half years. And you are the most consistent person I think I've ever worked with. You arrive on time for each and everything. You're, you're not, you guys, you know, you know, the type that are, that's like always like five minutes late. Now it's not Lorenda. She's always five minutes early. Lorenda, do you have that attitude that if you're not early, you're late? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I'd love I don't that. Like being late. <laughs> yeah, it, she's never, ever, ever late. You're never the one that goes, oh, I didn't remember that we had a meeting. You never have any of those. You're always there on time and ready to go. And you always have a smile and a really just positive, proactive, professional attitude. And I so admire that about you. So I hope those of you listening can tell that I think Lorinda is really a fabulous virtual expert and someone that you would be honored to have the privilege of working with. Thank you, Lorinda. Thank you. I've enjoyed this. <gasps> Yay. <laughs> You're easy to talk with. <laughs> so are you. Thank you so much.
Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm-hmm.